Hello! Hi, this is Jim Starkweather, the publisher of Kitmaker Network, and welcome to another episode of Mail Call, where I talk really fast and nobody can understand me, and I get lots of comments like that. Uh, sorry, it's an occupational hazard. Brain occupation. Okay, so let me get some of this stuff out of the way so I can actually see you guys. Well, I can't see you guys. You can see me, though. Um, yeah, we got a lot of stuff uh, that's accumulated over the past few weeks month or whatever some of it's been here for a while and i apologize about that to whoever sent it um to whomever sent it but yes basically um what do i want to start with i wanted to start with uh, this one i think uh da, 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 da. no this one no this one this one i wanted to start with well i hope everybody's been well and i i think i've misplaced my my cutters. I, I moved them because I needed them for something. They're, they're, oh, here they are. Here they are. Aha! I found them. All right. Anyways, I hope everybody's been well. Uh, things been going good here for the most part, and we will push on with opening stuffs. I won't do any long dribble drabble intro thingy. Okay, here we go. This is, I believe, from Tamiya, which probably. Most of you already know what this is, um, and I should have opened it like three weeks ago, but I didn't. So I'm sure many people already have seen this. But, uh, oh, oh, oh. Come on, come on. Ah, yes, it is the P38FG Lockheed in 148 scale. Yeah, 148 scale. Um, so if you don't know that this is coming out, which I just got an email from Sprue Brothers showing their, uh, well, not an email, but I saw on their Facebook page, actually, I think, that they had all their pre-orders stacked up, and they were like, if you want to order one, order one. So there you go. There's a place you can order one. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, this is a new kit, a uh, new tool, uh, probably, probably an excellent kit being to me. Yeah. Um, we'll do a, a brief little, a brief little mini unboxing here. No box. You're supposed to stay there and be like nice and like a prop thing. Be be a prop. Yes, there you go. Okay. Now you're trying to fall over again. Okay, we're good. Really? You're gonna just slowly kind of. All right. So um. Ha. Um. Yeah. Brown. Uh. Nice. Nice brown plastic. Nice. Nice large uh, piece. Uh, wing assembly there. Upper wing and and front fuselage. Um. But yeah, basically, uh, we've got one, two, three, and again, some nice, uh, nice big pieces on these. Uh, three, four, five, six, seven gray sprues, one clear sprue. Um, we've got some nice, some nice um, large ball bearings, I guess, for weight <laughs> that they included uh, for weighting it, I'm sure. And. Um, like some nice color, ooh, like a big color poster even. Yeah. He likes. I will keep this. And, you know. <laughs> uh, this kit is available for review, so if somebody's interested in doing this, uh, obviously uh, the kits are now coming out right now. I, I could have got this out earlier, but I apologize. Uh, it's just been one of those last couple weeks. Um, lots of family things and stuff going on. I just haven't had time to get to get to this. But all right, uh, and of course decals. I will say it in the, in the British fashion. Um, all right, so quick little pixie there. Not much of a pixie, I guess, but you know, it's all you get on this show. You don't get those detailed super vi videos like you know, like the ones we've been putting up lately from Matthew Lenton. My goodness, the man must have just time, time, time. I, I, I hope everybody realizes how long it takes to make a video like that. Seriously. It, it, you know, I, I rush through these, obviously, and do them as quickly as I can because it, it takes a while to even do these. But, you know, because I still got to take photos, usually, and stuff like that. All right, so um, Mike Guardia uh, was nice enough to contact me and uh, let me know he was interested. Thanks, Jim. Hope you enjoyed the book. Um, <laughs> to send us his new book, uh, Tomcat Fury. So, uh, again, we'll be trying to do a, probably a turning the page on this, or if someone's interested in doing a more in-depth review, if they're a Tomcat fanatic and they want to, like, have this book in their collection and want to do more of, like, a written review on the site, that would be great, too. Just contact me. Um, but, yeah, the author actually um, 
Contact Me Self. This is published by Magnum Books in Maple Grove, Minnesota. Um, I think it might be actually his self-published book, but but it looks like it's very nice in terms of uh, I've seen some self-published books before, and they don't look anything as nice as this. This is this is very well very well composed from a brief scan through. So, but again, uh, Mike Guardia's new book, uh, Tom Cat Fury: A Combat History of the F-14, out now in in online stores and online websites. All right, so um, what do we got here? We've got something from I believe. I'm going to say Flyhawk is a guess. Uh, and well boxed it is. Nope, I guessed wrong. You chose poorly. All right. I'll just rip this end off. All right, so what do we have from Flyhawk? We have a couple of tips. Uh, Royal Navy Seaplane Dockside Base. Okay, so this is interesting. This is a 1-700 scale dockside base. I don't know if it comes with the aircraft. We'll take a look. Um, but, uh, yeah, obviously for docking a small ship, maybe like the one they're showing. Or maybe it's just the whole thing. Maybe it's everything you see on the box. Yeah, the aircraft is included. The ship is included. Um, the whole, you know, dock area is included. So, you know how you how you fit it in and create a waterline um, a base. I think is up to you. Yeah, there's no there's no base included beyond that. Um, so you'd have to create the the water and so forth. But yeah, it's the com components basically to create that effect. So next we have the one seven hundred scale German battleship Scharnhorst, 1943. So that's um, refit version, I guess. Wait, no, it didn't. Never got the refit. The gun refit, anyways. I think it, it's going for some some uh, uh, certain refits, but not the not the upgraded guns that it was scheduled to, to get, but never got. Um, anyways, so uh, yeah, this is uh, again very good. Um, many many details in the in the uh, Flyhawk kits. This is a uh, which, which hull is this? Because I'm just curious. Uh, this is the split hull, so you can do either waterline or, yeah. But very nice. Very, very, very nice. Uh, oops, sliding off there. It's got a, actually a, ooh, it's got multi-pieces. We got, we have a top piece. We got an interim uh, upper hull piece. We have a flat piece that I guess goes on if you do a waterline, so it can, like, just cover up the base, the open base, and, of course, the, the lower hull. So, uh, yeah, all the pieces. But I don't think, yeah, so that piece normally wouldn't be there if you, yeah, right, right, right. Okay, so, again, we've got um, a few of these Flyhawk kits kind of stacking up for review, so if you're interested in doing it, if you're a ship modeler, which I know you guys are hard to find, you're like the rarest beast on the internet, the ship modelers, um, you just, you know, don't use it all that much or something, or you kind of stay within your own little groups, like Steel Navy site, is that still around? <laughs> Model warships, that's still around. Um, but, and of course, and of course, uh, model well, shipwrights on our site, you know, that's still, but, uh, anyway, all right, what's next? Uh, Hobby Marketing Pro. A mystery. Uh, but it's well taped. Well taped, well taped. Like that. Well much. Well taped. Okay, I'm not going to slap the slap sticky. Oh, it's a Zvezda. Okay. So, um, our Zvezda stuffs. All right, this is a 172nd scale um, Petal Yakov uh, PE-2 Soviet dive bomber. Um, and uh, looks like a, a cool little kit in terms of uh, the graphics and so forth. Got a lot of Soviet... Uh, boy, they really... They went out. They went all out with the, the writing on stuff, and they were almost as... They're almost as good as us Americans and stuff like that, you know. But maybe they actually work better. You know, if you play War Thunder, boy, they got some crazy schemes for you can put on some various planes and tanks and things. All right, uh, this is the 172nd scale Russian 5th generation fighter Su-57. Oh, so this must be the the new challenge to our <laughs> to the American, you know, superiority fighter and uh, 
does it fly? Uh, I, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> it probably does fly. But, um, but yeah, it, uh, it's always amazing to see because uh, it looks a lot like the the, um, the F35, obviously, or has some shares some similar traits too. So you always have to wonder how much technology was just kind of borrowed. I'll be nice, borrowed. Um, or just re uh, reverse engineered. I don't want to cut that, that cord, otherwise that microphone will stop working. All right, so from Mr. Coleman, who do we have? From Panda, we've got the M109A7 Paladin, so propelled howitzer. And this is a 135th scale, of course. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure, I assume it's an all new, new tool. I don't know if they put out something similar to this and this is a follow-up. But uh, lots of pieces, uh, something in a little, little, uh, this is odd to see in a, in a plastic kit, a little manila envelope. So it made me curious to have to look inside the manila envelope. Oh, it's a um, figure. Figure with a little ammo shell next to him. Uh, metal tracks. Kitty Hawk. Branded. Metal tracks, but yeah. Kitty Hawk Panda, I guess it's a dual use box. Um, anyways, so that's. Uh, Nice to see, and we'll have that available for somebody who wants to do a review. I don't know why I switched to French. Oh, oh, this this is a heavy one. This is a heavy one. This this is a heavy box from I believe AK. AK. Yep, AK Interactive. So it's got paints. More paints and things, but I'm not sure I'll know what to do with. Um. Our latest publications, oh, publications too, there's books in here. Um, use for, da, 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 so, yep, okay. Um, trying to read that word, but I can't. Okay. So they have a picture of the AK van thingy, the postcard man, cargo truck. All right, so what do we have from AK? We've got the Carving and Modeling Tools Aluminum Box Kit, including the most essential tools to handle your model's bases of foams. So it's kind of like a dental tool set, or, you know, if you've seen these before, they're, they're like picks and various uh, angled tools and stuff, so that's kind of cool. Um, yeah, I'm sure people like you know, getting all that in, like, one package. Uh, this is the carving foam that, uh, I guess, kind of goes along with this series of things. This is A5 carving foam, kind of an... Uh, dusty orange color and uh, this is a construction film six and ten millimeters so there's a couple of sheets in here separated or you know uh, wrapped in plastic but uh, and that is uh, that's part of their diorama series and what else do we have masking tape 18 millimeter AK masking tape high quality masking tape for modeling so if you're looking for some masking tape you can get it through AK now um, we've got also um, maple autumn Little um, laser cut leaves, I believe. Can't really see them too well without glasses on, although I can kind of see them. But, um, I'm, I was looking to see whether if it said how they were made. Um, glasses. Gonna have to get some prescription glasses soon, I think, or bifocals or something. Um, realistic leaves. Top quality product. Uh, made of printed, colored, and weathered paper. Okay, so. Um, I'll try to put like a close-up shot of these, but uh, but yeah, um, they're in a little small plastic box. Um, but yeah, I'll have to pull them out and photograph them. All right, so we have Easter gifts, World War II U.S. artillery crew from uh, MIG Productions. So um, again, a refresher. MIG uh, got bought out by uh, the old MIG catalog got bought out by AK, so they're reproducing some of these um, MIG items. Uh, or selling them the old stock. I'm not sure which the case, whether those are new or old. I'm probably, I'm guessing old. Um, Oscam Colors Limited Edition 71. Um, this is a paint set with, um, I'm guessing like four paints in it. Yeah, three paints in it. Australian green, Australian tan, and Australian black. So, quick little look at that. And then we have oh, a few of publications. My goodness. Boxes, actually. Separately boxed. Um, and in these we've got, um, 
I, hope, I think they've already sent me once, and I think I've actually even covered. But we'll cover it again. Oops. Eep, oop, oop, oop. Okay. We'll cut this part out. I was watching uh, the, week, the weekly Mingles with Jingles video that a guy in Britain uh, named Paul Carlton, I think, uh, he goes by the Mighty Jingles. But he's, he's basically a world of warships. It was a world of tanks, we're now a world of warships. And he's doing his weekly kind of dialogue y talk video. And he had, he had he was doing them in clips of audio. And I guess he was like doing a clip and then putting it in and then doing another clip. And I'm thinking, oh my God, uh, Jingles. I mean, like you said, 200 odd different audio clips. It's like, just do it all in one go and then come back and edit it. It's just, I don't know. Anyways, just seemed like a, a lot of uh, work. Uh, ultimate guide to diorama, ultimate guide to make buildings and dioramas. So I think I, I, I think I've shown this like last week or the, the uh, last week, last time or the week before. Um, but we got another copy of that. So, you know, yay. <laughs> Um, and then we have the, again, the, the, the doozy um, the catalog of stuff, and I believe I did cover these with some pictures, but it's kind of cool. They've got all these new uh, automotive products for 120th scale, I believe, or 124th scale. Uh, I'm not sure. 124th scale. Although maybe they do some 120th too, but these mostly say 124th, I believe. Uh, and then they have the Damaged Magazine. This is the one that they put out, uh, which has a different scale modeling things in it. But this one's got Chucky on the cover. Um, but yeah, good magazine. They've got a lot of really, really good, great photography in here. Of course, great, great examples of scale modeling. But different times, t different genres and stuff. This is Space Mercedes uh, C9. Yeah. Uh, so that's cool. All right, um, and then we've got uh, uh, Mig Productions catalog, which I think they might have just sent me to show me what they've got. But yeah, there's lots of cool stuff in that. We've got a hardcover book, which I believe is wrapped in plastic. So I'm not going to open it up because it'll take too long. <laughs> but this is a Dusch Panzer German um, tanks in World War One, 1917 to 1918, by Carlos de Vega or the Diego uh, Bas. Vasquiri, I'm not even going to try to do it. It's a, it's a Vaquerizio, Vaquerizio, anyways. So, um, yeah, this one's new. It's out uh, now. Uh, it's uh, got the Albion, Albion, I've always messed that up too. Uh, the, the, the old um, Albion uh, 502 brand on the back, so I'm not sure how that ties in. Maybe it was part of the research that they did for the products. Uh, then we have the... Worn art, uh, worn art collection, worn art W collection. Not sure. Wooden, uh, wooden worn art thematic collection. So that is got, um, I think, just lots of things with wood in them. Basically, just you know, items that are like painted to give give a wood, uh, good wood effect and so forth. So that's an interesting book. Um, and in English too. And we have T fifty four five slash five to IDF Tehran 4-5, The Birth of a Bastard Tank. Hmm. Very, very uh, good, good uh, title there. This is also of their, their uh, Aplung um, 502 uh, series, and it was with, in cooperation with Desert Eagle. And then we have ooh, a big AK catalog, which, as you can see, they got a lot of stuff. I mean, my goodness, that is a lot of things. Um... And their catalog, I swear, looks like a book. I mean, it's like printed exactly the same standards as their books, even to the point of having how-to guides in the back of it. So I suppose if you want to order their catalog, um, you'd actually get some some things in here as well. And they're just kind of interesting things. So, uh, whatever, whatever, I guess. And then we get um, Modern Conflicts Profile Guide, Volume 4, The Iran-Iraq Wars. This is 1980 to 88 and beyond, and it's Legacy by Zachary Sachs. Great name, Zachary. That would have been great as a teenager. What's your, Mr. Sachs? Mr. Sachs, would you please stand up and <laughs> no, I, I think of the weirdest things I know. Uh, how to work with colors and transitions with acrylics: blue, green, red, yellow, black, white, and brown. A.K. Uh, Carlos Vidal. Uh, so an interesting color a painting book. Uh, uh, potentially here, which uh, has some already very interesting artwork of some some wood wood creatures, woodland creatures, and the Hulk, 
lots of different um, genres here represented, but it uh, looks like it's very well detailed and probably great for figure painting. Next we have some more AK little stick-on things, which I will collect over here, because I just found one of those earlier and put it down. Um, again, more of their um, AK doozy things, like, you know, that's one of their, their Coca-Cola uh, cooler, and uh, I think it's 1 124th scale, doesn't say on that one. Uh, and then this one's a SO gas station pump. So for people who want to do some cool car dioramas, these are probably very, very um, welcome products to see turn up. Um, probably we're having to scratch build or get resin, you know, stuff before. Which was, the other stuff probably wasn't too bad, but there was a lot available. And then we have, oh, this is these are two really nice books here. Bubble wrap and everything. And again, looks like part of the uh, Abton. I know someone's going to put in the comments, this is how you actually say it. You know, I appreciate that. And I'm sure all the people watching appreciate trying to get me to remember how to pronounce it, but I'm just going to forget next time. So I'm sorry. <laughs> just, uh, you know, unless you do something like a lot, it's like, it's like taking a language course, right? You, you take Spanish one. And yeah, you, maybe at the end of the year, you, you're like, oh, okay, I can get by with rudimentary basics. And then you, and then next year you take Spanish too. And you, oh yeah. And, but by the time two or three years rolls around after that, if you haven't been talking to people speaking Spanish, you're, you're, you are not going to speak, you know, you're not going to remember. It just, it just won't happen. You got to keep this stuff in your brain constantly. Not constantly, but you know, enough to actually like make it set. All right. So, uh, Panzerwaff, uh, um, Tarnfarben, Tarnfarben. I don't, I'm not even tried that one in German either. But uh, Camouflage Colors and Organization of the German Armored Force, 1917 to 1945. So very, again, very specific time period. And these books, obviously, uh, color, black and white photos, color illustrations, it looks like. Um, but, uh, but very well done, detailed, uh, probably a lot of unique photos in here, I'm guessing. Although I wouldn't know because I'm not an expert on which books have what photos in them. I just go by gut feeling. But yeah, that uh, looks like a very nice book there. And we've also got their last path, IDF Tank Rex, Merkava, M Mark 1 and 2. So uh, if you're looking for maybe those old Merkava um, kind of uh, dios with, you know, burnt out tanks and, and wrecked tanks and so forth, this might be a, definitely a good resource for that specific tank. Or if you're just a Merkava nut and you want to have all, all the books on the Merkava, this, this will definitely be one you'll probably want. Uh, because again, great, great photos in here, and just these books are just like really well made, uh, well produced, well, well, well. They're they're made by book artisans. You can tell just by the, you know, they're they've got like raised or, or sunken lettering on the on the logos and things like that. I rant. I, I ramble. It's what I do. I'm good at it. All right. Um. Let's see. What do we got here? We got a box that's really, really, really well, you know, what am I going to say? What am I going to say? Where, where's a body of water I can throw this in? Uh, okay. Um, get burst. All right. So we have a T-34 D D-30 122mm Syrian self-propelled howitzer. So we have moved into the modern age. Well, actually, I... They've been putting out Abrams and things like that, right? Didn't I feel do a modern tank? Maybe I'm maybe I'm speeding them up a bit. Uh, this one looks like it's uh, color info and profiles provided by our ammo of MIG. Um, so probably a, a very nice. Yeah, we'll just take a quick peek. Nice, nice beige plastic. Um, Fiat Rightfield uh, looks like they've done another new a new tool because they have they done a T thirty four so that's new for them isn't it like T thirty four chassis and such and then we have uh, from Rightfield the M five fifty one A one um, Sheridan TTS uh, five fifty five okay M five fifty five M all right okay so somebody's gonna explain this one to me but M fifty five one A one slash M fifty five one A one is that the the hull in the turret or the hull in the gun? I mean, why, why have the same exact designator there? Anyways, the TTS Sher Sheridan. The Sheridan being a famously underused <laughs> um, uh, airborne tank. Now, is this a new, like, 
I'm not sure, let's look time period-wise, this looks like Iraq War or something. I didn't even realize we were even still using Sheridan. I thought they were basically like a Vietnam-era airborne tank that didn't quite go anywhere that we basically said nope to. Um, they're in world of tanks, though, and which is probably why this tank, why we, we're seeing this model, because it's the, the, it's the Tier 10 Scout tank and the light tank in world of tanks. Um, anyways, but then again, I know very little about the Sheridan, other than that just basic information I just recounted, so maybe I'm wrong. Is there a history section on this? I, I, I want to, I want to, I want to learn, I want to, I want to know more, but there's, it doesn't look like there's, maybe there's something on the box that I missed. Nope, nope, Ryfield not big on the history stuff, but you know, that's why p people put out books and such, right? Because the books tell you all you need to know. All right, so we've got that one and this one. I'll try to get some visual display going here. There we go. Uh, and then lastly, we have we've got the HMM one High Mobility Engineer Excavator. Well, that's pretty cool. Um, for people who like to do these, you know, constructor vehicles or military dioramas with, um, you know, Iraq, Afghanistan kind of. Uh, Heavy equipment in them. This is probably a very welcome sight. 135th scale, of course. And just launch it into that other stuff there. Um, and uh, include some photo etch parts and uh, lots of hydraulic -y parts, I'm sure. Lots of hose and things like that. And then we have a Russian weapon loading cart. This is for Kitty Hawk in 148th scale. And uh, this one is. Uh, Includes uh, a lot of uh, car carrier, right? Carrier-based uh, loading loading items uh, for for farming. It that's the Russian. So wait, carrier-based. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, never mind. I'm just gonna go there. <laughs> I, I guess ground, ground. So. Uh, Mig twenty-five PU Fox Bat. This is uh, one forty-eight scale. So it's a big, big box. Very, very, very. Uh, boxes did not get too crunched this time, by the way. Just a little crunching on this side, but we didn't have the, the, the box debacle we had from last uh, last time out. Um, but yeah, not really familiar with the aircraft or um, much about the model, but I'll take a quick peek inside. Uh, color manuals, a lot of plastic. Uh, we've got a gray, looks like laser cut section here with lots of gray parts. And uh, quick peek says looks good. I know. Everybody's looking for more. But I, I really want you to, like, you know, unbox it. You know, I, I would love to be able to have the time to do all those wonderful videos that I used to do that people love so much. I uh, never got any criticism on them whatsoever. Uh, um, but, yeah, I, I don't. Uh, so this is... Uh, this is I'm just going to open it without even looking at the box. This is the uh, another of the um, helicopters that they released a couple last time. We uh, still have a couple that need to go out, actually. Uh, but they're, I think they're designated to people. Um, so this is the 135th scale HH-60G Paypock. Um, now this, is this like the same as a Blackhawk? It's just a, it's like a different version of a Blackhawk, right? Or is it slightly extended? I don't know. Again, not a helicopter person, so I don't don't really know. But, but look at them hulls, man, or the fuselages. They're, they're gigantic. They're ginormous. They barely fit in the box. Um, and... Uh, Get it back in there, hopefully. But yeah, this has got a lot of plastic in it. Very, 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 very big box. So that that is basically everything we've gotten this week, this month, this whatever three weeks. Whenever I did the last video, it's been three weeks or a month. So um, thanks for watching. And if you're interested in doing uh, reviews for us, they'll put a thingy over here. This is how you find out more information about it. Um, we've got spreadsheets online that list um, hopefully most of the products we've gotten in recently. And uh, if not, you can always inquire the, via the emails that are listed on the page. You'll see kind of the same same people. For, for Armor Am, it's usually our editor there, Darren. And then uh, for Aeroscale, it's been me lately, but you can also contact Kevin. Uh, he's he's the, uh, the editor for the editor in chief for Aeroscale. And then for model ship rights, you can also contact me or Todd. If Todd's not available, just uh, yeah, let me know. So, um, yeah, I guess that covers everything. So, thanks for trying to make a trying to make a short one this week, but we did have a lot of stuff. So, uh, a lot of stuff from AK. Um, they definitely they 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 loaded me up book wise. Uh, I'll try to do some turning the pages on these books because that's only fair. 
but again, if you're interested in any of these, um, if you're interested in doing like a written review or um, something like that, a traditional review, then let me know and I'll, I'll consider sending them out. It's just books are kind of heavy and they don't, you don't generally get great uh, in-depth reviews on books from past experience. So um, yeah, anyways. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Mail Call. Thank you.